welcome to the Health Daily Show. I'm your host, Chitra Nabat. Joining us today is Andrew Adams, co-founder and managing partner, OKHCFT. Andrew, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Andrew, tell us about Oak and what's unique and different about your firm and investing approach. Sure. So Oak HCFT, we have been investing in healthcare for 20 years, and we've seen a lot of trends along the way, and I think it's really the depth that we participate in the industry that sets us apart. The other, issue, the other thing we do is we invest across stages. So we do early stage, growth stage, and later stage. And we also invest in all corners of the healthcare market. So when you put that all together, I think that makes us somewhat unique in the, in the healthcare VC landscape. How does this translate when you're talking to your LP investors? Because it's a volatile market, VC funding is down about 50% compared to last year highs, so it's taking VC firms longer to raise less money. How should LPs think about specific criteria, discernment, when they're evaluating which VC firm to put their capital with? Well, so specifically in healthcare, I know what our LPs value is the fact that we've been in the industry for so long. We've seen multiple cycles, not just capital market cycles that all VCs see, but also regulatory cycles. So BBA 97, when reimbursement was cut, the Affordable Care Act, what was, were happening right now, kind of post-Trump uh, election, the aftermath of that in terms of how that affects value-based models and other care delivery models. So we've seen all those cycles. We've invested in all of those cycles. And I think that's incredibly important to our uh, LPs. The other part about being successful in healthcare is just depth in the category. It is a regulated market. Those regulations change and you have to adapt and ensure that your business models are going to survive throughout administration changes and there's no stroke of the pen risk, if you will, to create consistent returns over a long period of time. And how does this play out when it comes to the founders, the companies that you invest in, in terms of how you as a, an investor show innovation and competitiveness to the founders and the companies? A lot of what we do in healthcare is working with CEOs that we've worked with in the past and been successful with, like Tom Lee, founder of One Medical, we back Tom again at Galileo, Brad Smith, Adam Bowler, both heads of CMMI, folks that we've worked with in the past and have rebacked. So that's incredibly important for us, and we take that relationship quite seriously with these entrepreneurs and really value the consistency and the length of those relationships. Um, so that really helps in periods of uncertainty when you have a steady hand uh, at the wheel and leading companies in our portfolio. We also, I mean, we like repeat entrepreneurs, we like seasoned um, operators that really understand the nuances of healthcare. It is a difficult market. And while a lot of folks come in from other industries and believe tech is going to solve all of the problems in healthcare, it's just, there's just nuances you have to appreciate. how providers operate and buy, how managed care companies operate and buy. Um, not, to, not to say you can't inject talent from other industries onto a management team, but you really have to have the depth of the industry to be successful. That's certainly something we look for, particularly in an environment like today. How do you add value to your founders and their companies? It, it comes to the depth and it really comes to how we built our team. So when Oak partners with a company, they get the entire firm. It's not just one partner, it's not just the deal partner, it is really the entire team. And our team is comprised of folks that come from the investment world, that have worked with dozens of companies sitting on boards, helping with M&A, um, think through kind of financing strategies and business building. We have think people come from operating backgrounds, from large managed care companies, from pharma companies, from uh, the, the provider market. So it's incredibly valuable insight on how to craft a go-to-market. We have very specific functional expertise in technology, and we have also very specific functional expertise on talent that really understands kind of how to build an ecosystem of executives to put into our portfolio companies. That's the combination that we bring to our portfolio companies. Value-based care. There is a lot of uh, a lot of talk, a lot of hype around this, more so than action. Uh, and healthcare startups are at that continuum of fee-for-service, fee-for-value, value-based care. How do you think about this in terms of your thesis and the companies you invest in? 
So you have two opportunities. We're, I mean, we're huge believers in value-based care. We think just aligning the incentives around a quality outcome is critical to success in the healthcare system and making a sustainable healthcare system. So the ways we address that opportunity is one, investing directly in those care providers. So if you have a high quality, low cost care delivery model, and you embrace technology and deliver a great patient experience and great clinical outcomes, you will win in a value-based environment. So we have a dozen value-based companies in our portfolio, and it's such a huge market opportunity. We can look at uh, primary care for Medicare Advantage. We can look at it for Medicaid, chronic populations. We can look at subspecialties like kidney, uh, women's health. So there are a lot of value-based opportunities in our portfolio, so that's one large uh, set of companies. The other is the enabling companies, the ones that are working with the legacy providers, as you said. They're built on a fee-for-service model and they need a transition to value-based. That requires technology, data, specialized services. So those enablement companies are another opportunity for our firm. When founders, companies come and pitch you, there are hundreds, thousands out there, many at this conference. Yes. You know, you talked a little bit about er earlier around the deep domain, the commitment. Are there specific metrics attributes that make you really notice and be like, like, what does it take for one of these founders to really get your attention? Well, we've been in the industry for a very long time. So we've seen uh, a number of huge successes and other companies uh, uh, from afar that haven't quite worked out. So we bring all of that perspective to bear when we're assessing an opportunity. And I think we look for folks that like, really appreciate the complexity of healthcare and appreciate that it takes time, particularly where we focus on the B2B side, selling to a payer, selling to a provider. Those are long sales cycles. We understand that. So you have to have a large pipeline. You have to deliver a very sustainable and a, kind of an immediate return, whether that's a better outcome in a value-based contract or you're selling software that has an ROI. So we look for a lot of proof points around that beyond the strength of the leadership team and the knowledge of that leadership team. Um, and then we look for kind of technology or clinical model or data differentiation that creates some sort of competitive mode. Um, and we do all of that very efficiently uh, because we have invested, we have 50 active healthcare companies. So we have a strong base of knowledge to assess the 51st company that will join the own portfolio. Leadership. In life and business, there are norms, rules, codes on how things are done. Where have you been a code breaker in business or your life journey, and how did you do it? Well, I would say one of the code breakers we have is what I mentioned earlier about working the projects as a team. So if you think about the venture capital industry, uh, folks used to talk about the Jedi Knight culture. You know, kind of one name, one brand, one ego that is, you know, leading the charge and they are the face of the firm uh, at that portfolio company and in the market. We have a collective approach at our firm. You really do have the Oak team. We have to work it interchangeably. That's the best support for our companies. So I'd say in the VC landscape, kind of sharing the credit and all collectively working on projects, that is potentially outlier behavior. Um, the other thing is just true intellectual honesty. So we really do just try and make the best decisions as a firm and not have it turn into kind of a political dynamic on who's doing what project or, you know, you help me with this follow on and I'll support this. I mean, these are the kind of things that happen in the venture landscape and we really try and maintain intellectual honesty when we're making the decisions for the firm. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.